Okay, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the delay. We, I just had a technical problem, and now, alhamdulillah, it's solved. I hope that you guys are having a good morning and that you guys could hear me well, okay? So um, today we have only one session. I'm just waiting for everyone to resume back and join back up again with us um, so that we can... Uh, uh, yesterday, the second session, we weren't really able to do anything because the connection was lost. I was trying to join from... Um, a phone, a mobile, Masahar's phone, but it wasn't working either. So I apologize about that also. Okay. So let's just wait for um, participants to join and then we're going to resume. In the meantime, just have your textbooks ready um, so that we can um, right away uh, pick up the reading where we left off and continue with finishing the story today, inshallah, for Raymond's run. Okay, so as you guys can see, we are going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We were discussing the, um, the idea of um, squeaky uh, being, uh, you know, different now. Uh, she made a, uh, she went through an epiphany, as we said, where she realizes and she admits that she's a different person. Okay, that she, she's actually starting to like and tolerate um, sin, uh, Gretchen more than she did before. She also uh, made a realization about her brother, okay, and her perspective or how she views Raymond also changed towards the end. She doesn't only see him as a burden or, it, or as if he's someone who is uh, who's someone who needs to be constantly watched and protected, but she sees the potential in him, okay? And remember, potential is one of the key words that we know is that when you think that, um, you know, something could have potential, we see that, remember when we discussed the potential, that when you see the good in someone, okay, you see that this person could actually uh, achieve, okay? So she saw the potential in Raymond uh, when she saw that he's actually capable of keeping up with her the entire race and the way that he climbed the fence and uh, she saw that he could actually uh, be something, okay, uh, considering athletics. And she decides that she could actually dedicate her time and energy towards making him a champion okay, and not so much focus on herself. She wants to branch out and she wants to try uh, to excel in other areas, okay? She doesn't only want to focus on running, but she wants to give it a shot um, in spelling, in the spelling bee, and also piano in hopes of uh, beating Cynthia. And she describes her as a phony, someone who's fake, because we know that Cynthia um, is one of those people that would uh, lie and pretend that things came natural to her when in fact she spends a lot of time practicing and um, studying, okay? So um, she also feels uh, bad for Raymond that he doesn't have anything to call his own regarding uh, medals and ribbons and awards. So she wants to make him feel that he could also um, achieve and make himself, make him happy about himself, all right? So I stand there with my new plans. Okay, this is the last part of the story. Um, if you guys don't have the book open, you can follow with me on the screen. If you do, follow with me in your books, okay? So I stand there with my new plans. Remember here also, please don't forget the fact that the, uh, the winner has not yet been announced, okay? And this is a little uh, way of the author adding a little suspense because obviously we know that the race was a, a, the conflict of the story, all right? And for her... Um, for for squeaky coming first place meant uh, that's what the that's that's what her goal was, and now suddenly uh, we don't know who's in first place. It could be her. It could be Gretchen. 
All right, so here again, this is some type of also conflict because the judges are contemplating uh, according to the stopwatch of who made it first, okay? So it could be a difference in seconds, okay? That could uh, alter the winner, okay? Or it could put Squeaky in first place, it could put Gretchen in first place. But here, so I stand there with my new plans. Her new plans, again, she's referring to her uh, giving up running and becoming a coach, focusing on the spelling bee and the uh, and playing piano. All right, so these are her new plans. Laughing out loud by this time as Raymond jumps down from the fence and runs over with his teeth showing and his arms down to the side, which no one before him has quite mastered as a running style. And by the time he comes over, I'm jumping up and down so glad to see him. My brother Raymond, a great runner in the family tradition. But of course, everyone thinks I'm jumping up and down because the men on the loudspeaker have finally gotten themselves together and compared notes and are announcing in first place, Miss Hazel Elizabeth Deborah Parker. Dig that. In second place, Miss Gretchen P. Lewis. And I took over at Gretchen wondering what the P stands for. And I smile because she's good. No doubt about it. Maybe she'd like to help me out, help me coach Raymond. She obviously is serious about running, as any fool can see. And she nods to congratulate me, and then she smiles, and I smile. We stand there with this big smile of respect between us. I'm about as real, it's about as real a smile as girls can do for each other. Considering we do not practice real smiling every day, you know? Because maybe we're too busy being flowers or fairies or strawberries instead of something honest and worthy of respect, you know, like being people, okay? So again, this is the ending of the story, all right? Um, the way, of course, the resolution ends with, uh, you know, Hayes with uh, Squeaky, all right? She's the winner, all right? She's the first place winner. She's jumping up and down from joy, but again, there's double meaning, okay? We know her true intentions of jumping up and down. She's doing it out of joy uh, because her brother made it to her okay so um this is um so she's jumping up and down from joy because her brother made it she's proud of him and this is her way of showing her happiness okay in him and his how much she's proud of him and his accomplishments okay and uh, of course people uh, she thinks that people are you know they think that she's jumping up and down because she's first place all right but we know that inside her true intentions is that she does not longer care about making it first or second. She is entirely happy and focused on the fact that Raymond is now uh, first place, uh, actually capable. All right, so she's happy. And at the end, also, we see a difference in the way that the, the, the girls smile at each other. Earlier, when they were on the Broadway Street um, and they were exchanging uh, words, and it was very tense between them, uh, Squeaky made the observation that girls never smile at each other sincerely. It's always a fake smile or something that's not real or true. All right, so she's saying now that we had a big smile of respect and it was a real smile, okay? And the reason why she says that uh, girls don't usually smile at each other is that because we are busy being um, something or pretending to be something that we're not. Okay, the example that she uses here is the fairies and the strawberries from the Maple Dance, because that's something that she doesn't see herself fit in with. Okay, so um, now we're done with the story, and I need you guys to open up. I'm going to go here, and we're going to open up our um, study guide questions. Okay, and we're going to start answering them together. Okay, and uh, let's see what we understand from the story. Okay, and of course, there are 13 questions. There long we're not we might not finish them today whatever is not going to be left over is going to be moved back for um tomorrow's discussion okay so we have tomorrow uh, uh we're going to work on finishing up the grammar and today we're going to finish whatever uh we can from here so i'm going to open up the uh the chance for you guys to unmute yourselves because i'm going to turn the discussion now over to you and i want to hear your answers uh, while we do this together. Okay, so um, the first thing that we need to know, uh, at the beginning of the story, what does the narrator reveal about her family, her own responsibilities in the family, 
How does she feel about this responsibility? And give evidence from the story to back up your, your answer. Okay, so who's ready to give, um, to answer this one for us? Hannah, go ahead. She don't have much uh, um, yani, uh, to work in the house, but she has a res responsibility uh, about her uh, little brother, um, uh, Lawab, uh, Raymond. Okay, good. Uh, and her mother do the, the, her mother do the rest, and George uh, uh, earned for the big boys and sell uh, Christmas cards. Good. Uh, and uh, how she feels about the respons responsibility, that is, that is enough for her. Good job. Perfect. Okay, so you touched base on everything. Good job, Hannah. All right, so the first thing is the, the narrator speaks. All right, um, so we can say that definitely um, the first thing is about her family. All right, uh, her mom is responsible. For the, the house chores. All right, and basically um, doing things around the, around the house. All right. Her brother. Her brother George. And her father. They work. work to earn money. All right. All right, Sweetie doesn't have to to do any. She doesn't have to do any house chores, no work for money. Her only responsibility is to take care of her she thinks. All right, so this is exactly what Hannah said, all right? So her mom is responsible for house chores. The father and George work for by, to earn money, all right? Squeaky doesn't have to do any of the house chores. The only responsibility for her, uh, nor does she have to work for money, by the way. And the only thing that she has to really do is uh, uh, basically take care of her brother Raymond. And uh, she feels that this is a heavy burden and a difficult task because she refers to, she refers to it as which is enough, okay? So we could tell here that this is her attitude, all right? And don't forget, uh, in, in, in by age, who is older and who's younger? Ali. Is she younger or is she older than Raymond? Uh, she's older, she's younger than Raymond. Good, good. So why do people refer to her as her uh, little brother? Because uh, Raymond can take, uh, cannot take care of uh, himself, so uh, Squeaky uh, uh, takes care of him. Good. All right. So good job. All right. So here, um, he's definitely age-wise and even physically, he's bigger than her in age and size. But uh, a lot of times, people refer to him as his, as her younger brother, or or she's older than him because the fact that she has to take care of him because of his mental condition. Uh, which who remembers what the mental condi the mental condition was called? Hala. Yes. What was his mental condition called? What what, what is what is um uh, what is Raymond suffering from? 
uh, he uh, had uh, it's uh, I don't remember. Sorry. It's okay. Who could remember, Hannah? Hannah Hamdi, do you remember the the condition that he was suffering from? Uh, it's a, a hypo, hypo, a hypo something, hypo. Sifa? It's the um, brain. Syphilis. Hypocephalus, hypocephalus. Good. Remember, guys, remember, if they, an easy way to remember is when you break down the word in two. Hydro, water, syphilis is the brain. All right? So it's like basically excess water or extra water around the brain that causes the brain to swell and becomes bigger in size, okay? And that's why people were making fun of the size of his head in um, the when, when Gretchen stopped them along with her sidekicks, they were criticizing the, side, the size of Raymond's head because of that, okay? So let's remember the name of the, uh, the condition is hydrocephalus. Hydro for water, syphilis for the brain, all right? Describe how Speaky received her nickname and how does, it, um, how does her personality, how does her personality contradict her looks, okay? So uh, first of all, her name is Squeaky. How did she get it? Who could answer that question for us? Uh, Who's going to answer? Sure. Uh, her name is Squeaky because she has a squeaky, a squeaky voice. And uh, because she's uh, thin and weak. Say that again. Because of her squeaky voice. Good. And because... Uh, because she's uh, thin and weak. Uh, one minute. Alright, so can you explain how her personality is different, or how does it go against or contradict her looks? Do they match? Explain. Uh, one minute. If we need to go back to here, we can always refer back to the text. Um, support. All right, so when she was talking about herself, uh, she has uh, short legs and she got tricky. Uh, oh, okay, hold on. This is not her. This is your, what you're reading is the part where she's talking about Gretchen. All right, the part with the short legs and the freckles is not her. She's not describing herself. These are the reasons, the reasons that she gave for why Gretchen is unable or incapable of winning the race. So you're reading a description of Gretchen, not of Squeaky. Okay, please pay attention to the details, guys. All right. Uh, what, because, yeah, because she has skinny arms. So. All right. So again, all right, a little girl with skinny arms and a squeaky voice, which is how I got the name Squeaky. All right. And if things get rough, I run. So again, this is the part where we, we should be looking at, all right? So uh, physically, all right, so physically, Squeaky is described is described as a little girl with with what? What did they say? With skinny arms and a squeaky voice. Let's talk about her personality. Luji, you ready? Uh, she seems uh, she seems tough, but. Um... Uh, Miss, I can't hear you. All right, her personality gives off a different approach. Discuss her personality. Um, she seems uh, she uh, she's tough, but uh, so she can uh, f uh, fight for her brother, Raymond. All right, so person her personality is and Ceci. It's different. Tough and Ceci. As she acts in a very tough and serious
All right, she mentions even. She doesn't like wasting time talking in an argument. She much rather go straight to punching and knocking someone out. All right. So here you wouldn't expect uh, All right, so her personality here and her and her uh, looks are very different. Okay, of course her looks look like um, she looks like someone who is, um, you know, skinny. Okay, someone who cannot who is not taking so seriously. All right, all right. So here, someone who is not taken so seriously. All right, someone who um, could actually be taken as weak, all right, or looked at as weak, okay. However, her personality is totally different as she's very tough and she gives off these very um, strong vibes of, you know, being serious and she even says that she doesn't mess around with anyone, all right. She much rather just go straight to uh, punching them instead of wasting uh, time. Okay, and also her attitude about defending Raymond is also uh, um, that. All right, so uh, what uh, what does the narrator Squeaky value as her two greatest traits? All right, so what are her two greatest uh, traits, Ali? Um, she's a good runner. Good. Good. And um, she is serious about uh, her breathing exercises. All right, so that also could fall back into the the running. Okay. All right, so she's a great. Okay. She, ha she has great running skills. And takes her training so seriously. All right, she takes her training so seriously. As we can see her training at any time and anywhere. Okay, and that we said uh, bothers her mom. Okay, it's something that her mom gets embarrassed of. All right, to see her daughter, um, you know, just running out of the blue. All right, so uh, so this is something that. Squeaky has mentioned, okay, and she's very proud of that. All right, All right. training at any time and anywhere, and she is known to always, uh, to always what? Which, which, what is she always getting? Always known to first place. Yeah, first okay. place. Right, good. She's always known to. She's, she is known to always uh, receive the first place medal during the May Day during the May Day race. What is another thing that she's proud of? Think Raymond wise. All right, she's very proud of what of being able to successfully. Uh, look after Raymond, all right? She mentioned that who was taking care of Raymond before and how did that turn out to be? Who can elaborate on that, Maya? Uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, she's proud that she's like handling uh, Raymond because before that, her older brother, uh, George, was not like handling, uh, taking care of Raymond. Good. 
All right, she's proud of how she's, she is successfully handling Raymond and protecting him. All right, in a sense, she, she proved to do a better job uh, looking after than her brother George did. All right, so her as a girl, she takes pride of that. Remember again, guys, the, the major theme behind this story is to show that girls are capable. All right, it's like girl power, you know what I mean? So for George to fail and being a, a male, and he wasn't successful at looking after Raymond as much, and she's doing a better job at protecting Raymond, that gives her some type of pride, okay? And we can see that pride, we can see when she says that any anyone who has something to say about Raymond has to has to do well. Has to go through me to you know to, to go through me first. All right, so you have to face me first before you face Raymond. So here, she, we already see here that she um, has gotten this, um, you know, this this lockdown. She got this under control, and she's very proud of that. All right, especially that uh, she's doing a better job even than. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you just uh, go up? I need to copy something real quick. I'm going to send you guys this file. I'm going to save it and I'm, I'm going to upload it for you. Okay, so don't worry. Even if you didn't copy something down, I'm going to upload it. All right, number four, who challenges Squeaky and how the Squeaky responds? Luigi Ayman, please. Uh, Gretchen. Gretchen, all right. And this is actually one of the conflicts that we said that this is what? An external conflict of man versus man. Okay, or character versus character, whichever one uh, you guys want to uh, prefer to use. Character versus character, man versus man, either are acceptable. All right, and of course we know that they're challenging each other uh, for the May Day Rays, the 50-yard dash. All right, so they're both, both competing to win first place. In the May Day relay, the May Day race, and just remember that it's the 50-yard dash, okay? Because when they were younger, they were um, running something what well, a shorter distance. She went over the uh, the yards, okay? The distancing, okay? Important to know in case you see it in any MCQ or multiple choice question. All right, how does Fifi respond to that? Uh, because of certain reasons, um, that she has short legs and freckles. Right. Um, so we know that Squeaky does not accept, cannot accept the idea of Gretchen winning. winning first place, okay? For her, this is like an impossible thing to happen, all right? It's impossible for Squeaky to accept this idea. She can't even uh, tolerate it, all right? So she gives absurd or ridiculous reasons explaining why Gretchen why Gretchen cannot win, such as, all right, like you've mentioned, the idea of uh, freckles. What else does she say? Uh, that she has short legs. Short legs. And that uh, she 
one could beat her. And that no good, and that no one can possibly beat her. So here we, see, of course, um, this is her way of, um, you know, not giving uh, Gretchen any credit. She's putting Gretchen down for no reason, and it shows us uh, how uh, Squeaky is very um, self-centered. Okay, and she doesn't view anybody. Uh, she doesn't even want to give anyone credit for being even as good as she is, all right? And that's one of her problems that were resolved at the end of the story when she was able to finally admit that Gretchen is also a good runner, all right? And that started when she saw her warming up before the, uh, before the race, all right? She said that she's kicking up her legs like a pro, all right? So this is when we first saw um, Squeaky changing in that area of being so self-centered. Describe this, the, the conflict Squeaky faces and how she manages it. All right. Um, here, again, this is with the race. I'm going to skip that question because it's repetitive. Squeaky doesn't think that girls can really be true friends. All right. Let's uh, give me the example here. When does she uh, mention that? And what, give, me, give me the, uh, who could elaborate on that question? She thinks that girls cannot be true friends. True friends. How does she uh, point that out? Judy, please. Uh, when uh, Gretchen and the Squeaky smiled at each other, that was a fake smile, which uh, true friends like don't smile at each other that way. Good. All right. So uh, she she mentions that. What else does she mention when she talks about the sidekicks? Right. When she mentions Gretchen and the sidekicks, what what is all that stuff that she mentions that? That even proves that girls are very flaky and very, um, uh, you know, um, untrustworthy in friendships. Uh, how about... Um, Can I say? Yes, please. Yes. That Mary uh, Louise uh, was her friend, but she left her and go to uh, Gretchen. Good. All right. She mentions that here she talks a lot about uh, her experience with girls, all right, and their friendships. And that basically, um, she's unhappy, all right? She's very unhappy with, the, uh, with girl friendships because her experiences were all um, not so good, all right? So here she mentions that uh, she used to be a friend of mine uh, when she first came to Harlem from Baltimore. Uh, I stood up for her, okay? I took up for her. And, uh, you know, now she hangs out with the new girl, and talks about me like a dog, all right? So like Hannah said, okay, uh, she was a good friend of hers, okay? And even Squeaky was, you know, a very faithful friend. She protected her and defended her from the, uh, from the bullies. And then when Gretchen came around, she kind of like ignored Squeaky and became Gretchen's friend. And not only that, but she started to talk about Squeaky in a very bad way, okay? Like a dog, all right? Mm. Also, she mentions Rosie. Rosie is another one that she dislikes because she always has something, a big mouth where Raymond is concerned. So she's always um, criticizing or saying something negative about Raymond. And that, of course, upsets Squeaky. All right. And then the final thing that we're going to mention is the smile. Okay. She said that girls are unable to smile at each other, a sincere smile, because uh, they're too busy being fake and each one is also busy with their own insecurities, all right? So they're always competing uh, to be uh, better than each other, all right? So here, uh, girls can uh, doesn't think that girls can be true friends, okay? So we're going to mention what we discussed now, all right? So Squeaky. Does not... Good. All right, so here she doesn't have a good background with her girlfriends, or not even a background, she doesn't have a good experience with her girlfriends, okay? All right, first she mentions, we're going to discuss the first girl, which is Mary Louise. All right.
Left side to become. I started talking. All right, where I am closing always has something negative to say about Raymond. She also believes that girls are unable to sincerely smile at each other because they are fake and insecure. All right, so this is our uh, answer for the friends part. Okay, um, the next question here, what piece of dialogue best demonstrates how protective Squeaky is? We already discussed that. I'm going to eliminate the things that are repetitive. The next question, number six, is here when we're discussing how the Squeaky's perspective of the maypole dancing differ from her mother's point of view. All right, so uh, the pole dance, again, is the most important part of the show. This is where people go and um you know um celebrate okay and let's discuss who could uh, who could answer this one let's hear from a new uh voice how about kinsey how does squeaky's perspective differ from her mother's perspective regarding the maypole dance Khadija? We, we don't hear you, Khadija. You can answer, baby. I'm, I'm listening. The biggest thing in the program is the maypole dance. And the uh, squeaky uh, doesn't think that she can uh, uh, get uh, a dress and the shoes for only one day. Good. All right, so, um, okay, let's talk about first her perspective. So you're going to start out with Squeaky's perspective. All right, so uh, Squeaky doesn't think, of course, that, um, how does she feel about the maypole dance? Does she like to participate in it, Khadija? No. No, right? Why? What are her reasons to why she doesn't like to participate in, in the maypole dance? Okay, Khadija, look, we have less than one minute. I don't want the, the, the chat, to, the, the meeting to end midway while you're answering. So we're going to stop here. And these are the rest of the questions. I would like for you guys, to, I'm going to upload this file on SMS uh, for you guys to keep so you know which questions I eliminated and which ones are left with us. Okay. For homework, I want you to finish off 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 11. These. Okay. So I deleted two questions that are repetitive. I'm going to save this file, upload it on SMS for you. Finish off 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10, and 11 for homework. And tomorrow we're going to conduct a uh, discussion over them and write notes. And then we're going to discuss uh, types of uh, kinds of sentences and grammar. All right. So, inshallah, tomorrow uh, we have two sessions, I believe, and then we'll be able to.